Kosh. Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great. And for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. In today's episode, we are going to be going over all the details in regards to the X9 Draft League that I'm actually involved with going forward. So content will be starting soon. This is going to be the first episode where we'll be kind of covering just an overview of the players in the draft, the teams very briefly, and just what the Draft League's all about and what it entails. So the Draft League is made up of 16 players, uh, amazing players, amazing content creators as well. Uh, Joe actually put the, the whole Draft League together and kindly approached me like a little while ago now and asked me if I want to be involved. And of course, I said yes with open arms. So big shout out to Joe for actually asking me in the first place. Very excited to be involved in this Draft League. I think with the other content creators, you know, there's a lot of content creators I'm sure you watch and I definitely watch as well. So to be involved in it and kind of competing against them is, uh, is going to be very exciting. So hopefully I can do the content justice over the next few weeks while we uh, cover all the matches and the analysis and things like that but like I said today's video is just going to be an overview of the draft league and then going into my team analysis with uh, my week one opponent which we'll get to in a moment to mention as well that the draft league will be playing double battles format so all of the rules that are kind of incorporated in VG is what will be incorporated within the draft league going forward so it is a doubles format how we're approaching this one obviously just wanted to make you guys aware of that before we get into the meat and bones of this video. So hopping over into our first screen, you can see here it is. Look at these graphics as well. You've got to give a big shout out to all, all the team working on the graphics for this draft league. They've been amazing. But here's an overview of all the players that are involved. So we've got uh, we've got Colin the Battle Room. We've got CK49, Fevzy, Jin, Mandy B, uh, Moxie. We've got Poker Alex, Steph, Viz, Ashton, Necra. We've got Sierra, Joe, of course, myself, uh, Pokemon Cast, and Nina Poker Bros. So, I mean, like, like the array of content creators here is amazing and um it's like i say i i'm kind of repeating myself so i do apologize but i am really hyped for this one and uh you know the quality of players as well it's going to make it really difficult so the eventual winner you know coming out of this if you can win this it's a massive thing to be able to win this against like such an array of crazy good pokemon players and at the same time we're gonna have a lot of fun with it because i think that the beauty about a draft league is obviously for those that you aren't aware draft league is we get to pick pokemon and once that pokemon's picked then no one else can pick that pokemon so it's kind of like a little bit strategic than the draft picks and things like that but we'll get over to uh the draft order because it was done in a snake draft so this was the draft order. So basically, like I said, each player takes a turn to pick a Pokemon that is put into specific tiers. And uh, that once that Pokemon is picked, then you can no longer pick that Pokemon. There's lots of rules around um, what, how, which Pokemon you can pick at a certain time and how many you can pick from a certain tier, etc. And then you get a bunch of free picks at the end, which again are restricted by certain rules. Joe did an amazing stream of the entire draft list live. So if you want to check that out, his uh, Twitch channel is linked down in the description. All the information is over on there and uh, I'll link his YouTube as well, which he may have uploaded uh, the draft picks to there but you can see from the draft league so we've got all of the players in order it's a snake draft so top to bottom all get one pick and then it goes from bottom to top again so that bottom player even though they're at a disadvantage to begin with they do get a double pick at the end so unfortunately for us we were like second to last in the draft now it kind of worked against us and definitely worked with us as well and i think from my experience from being in like nbls and other draft leagues before i kind of brought that experience with me here so one of the big things was obviously you get that tier one pick the biggest pokemon uh, available like your g maxes all your big powerful pokemon glastria and stuff like that and I, I thought do i make a plan on a team idea going into the draft league knowing that i'm going to be like that 15th spot and probably whatever i create a team round or an idea round is probably going to be gone by the time it gets to me for that first pick so i thought rather than spend loads of time planning my team and things like that 
what I did was I decided to just kind of wing it and it sounds really bad but at the same time I kind of thought well I'm going to see what's available when it comes to my pick and make an evaluation and it kind of worked out really well especially towards the end of the draft uh, if you do go and check that out with the uh, the actual draft picks there's a sneak peek of one of the teams here and we'll get we'll go through the teams quickly now got Fevzi's team here I'm not going to go into too much detail of the actual teams they were all ranked by John the team uh, on his stream so do check that out they go into a bit more detail about it but just to keep this video a bit more condensed because I'm obviously going over the team that I'll be using in week one today as well um you've got Jin and I mean look at this look at Jin's logo and everyone provided their own logos mind and you know like some of them are absolutely insane um so that's Jin's team there you can see from the tier one uh picks you get two tier one picks which are the the better Pokemon and they kind of tiered down from their tier two tier three tier four and then you get your free picks at the end um and it's all dictated by the draft and what's left available in those tiers so there's joe's team again new york oblivion uh you've got brave bird buccaneers love this name love this logo from uh, from bryce uh, you've got Necra, of course, the Shoutcast and Sylvians, uh, probably one of the best logos, I think, here, and a pretty scary team as well. Obviously, um, you know, Rose was able to snipe that Glastria really early on. It was definitely something I think a lot of players were after, so really good there, and the concept of her team, amazing. Ne uh, Necra's done an amazing, like, overview of her kind of draft selections as well, so go and check out the YouTube channel. All these content creators, all their handles, all of their, their channels, everything will be linked down in the description, so do check them out if you want to kind of keep up with some of the other players in the draft league while this is going on. We've got Nino Poker Bros with the Vegas Tornadoes, do love this logo as well and uh, a really nice team you know the Urshifu and the Cinderace really great tier one picks um, and then you've got spoiler alert my first opponent of week one could it come any harder than poker alex where he's uh probably the best named team in the tournament uh too hot to handle harry amas do love the logo as well um but alex being true classic alex fashion has picked an amazing team uh with with the options obviously being last in the draft league didn't really help him out initially but making a really good call there with the tapu fini cartana start that kind of firewater grass core um and get that going for the late game got a lot of options in here then we got sierra with her toronto maple muse obviously mew being one of my favorite legendaries got a very soft spot for this team already and because of working with sierra in um the uh, players cup three was amazing experience so yeah i'm hoping i don't know the actual uh schedule yet for all the opponents i haven't looked through it all i don't know if i play sierra but hopefully i do and kind of hopefully i don't as well at the same time you know because she's got a pretty nasty team with the lander Ethereum, the moltres pretty solid picks and then she made a real sleeper pick with the, the reggie steel as well so that call there is just nasty and then obviously reggie gigas and the coughing kind of the the substitute kind of wheezing i guess but it works just as well uh mode in there as well very scary team honestly and then you've got our team. So we'll stop on this for a minute. Well, well, no, we'll come back to my team in a minute. We've got the Golden State Glacians. We've got Steph uh, with the Rillaboom Garchomp tier one picks. Lapras Magnazon as tier two picks. And then the Comfy is a tier three pick. Just, you know, you can see the team kind of forming itself already lots of nice options in here speed control all over the shop and um, obviously options to utilize and burden as well which i think is really smart with that grassy terrain that the rillaboom provides scary team love the logo don't want to play it probably will we'll see how it goes and then you go colin one of the all-time best U us battlers of all time i think colin's a great battler and uh, it's going to be again an opponent I love that he's involved, but an opponent I don't want to be playing because I know how good he is. And he's got a solid team that I think reflects quite a lot of like Colin's kind of where he's comfortable with things like obviously Zapdos, Grimmsnarl, things that you could see him playing anyway. So he's made some really nice picks. The Ferrothorn as well, giving great win cons and things like that. And then the, the kind of the Nihiligo here I really like because it helps and gives an additional buffer to the Trick Room mode that he's got with like the Rhydon, the, uh, the Bomber Snow and the hat turn in a combo as well and obviously keeping that redirection with the togetic uh then we've got the antarctic Aegislashes slashes from viz who is like just a great content creator a great battler started off doing singles but has moved recently into vg so it's really nice to have him uh involved as well and uh he comes up with some mad stuff he's a solid battler again one of those players that you're like do i want to play him probably not 
let's just kind of avoid them <laughs> until the later stages of the tournament. Got a really scary team as well. Obviously, uh, PZ's picking up a little bit of... Uh, it's getting Murmurans now in the current VG format. So uh, it's a real good pick, I think, here. Yeah, uh, especially with the Indeedy, which is probably one of the best, like undeniably best kind of support options you've got with that Follow Me and, and Psychic Train, along with all of the other powerhouses he's got access to. And little Pika at the end. Here's Marcus's team, Moxie Boosted. I'm sure all of you know Moxie Boosted. Great, an innovative team builder, uses a lot of unique things. But in this time round, he's absolutely destroyed his draft picks because he's got the colossal combo here and uh, he's got ways to utilize that with, you know, the Sneasel there for one. He's got the Trick Room options with Dusk Glops as well. It's a very scary team. He's got some really unique picks in here. Some things that he like favors and is well known for. Obviously, that Thievel being one of them that jumps out to me. Galissapod as well, another one um, that I definitely relate to him when I see this Pokemon. Great battler, scary team. Definitely don't want to face him. But yeah, overview, I think uh, very cool. Here we go. We've got Pokemon Cast, the Milwaukee, Crams. Obviously, really good first pick with the Regieleki. I mean, between Glastria, Regieleki, and probably Colossal, they're the kind of three top Pokemon that probably a lot of players looked at initially and said, right, I'm going to try and bag these in that tier one pick. Um, great team overall and great logo. Although I'm not the biggest Cramorant fan. Cramorant kind of scares me. I got a little bit disturbed. As you would know from my early experiences with Sword and Shield and Cramorant, Swallow and Pikachu. So up next, we got Ashton Cox, the man himself, the Ohio Ho-Ohs, and uh, some really solid draft picks here again. A really good team with lots of different combinations in, lots of good utility. You've got Double Fake Out. You've got Intimidate with that Hitman top. You've got Sleep Threats from the Jinx as well. We all know about that. Nice combinations between potentially the Entai there with the Bulldoze combination, with the Tentacruel for weakness policy and... Uh, it goes on and on and on matching up with clear body but yeah i won't go into too many things what i think could happen with this team i'm sure he's got plenty of them and the beauty about ashton is as well when he first came onto the vg scene he was known as like this mad innovator with really like out there teams and doing well in tournaments with them and a draft league is like a pretty good environment for ashton so going to be a, definitely a very good pick if uh, if you are supporting him to go the the full way in the tournament wouldn't surprise me if we see him do it and he's got a very he got a very solid draft pick as well you know then we've got ck49 with the flagstaff flygons and you know addy is one of the like he's just an incredible battler so to have him involved it's scary but a, a lot of fun as well and he's got a really good solid draft pick you know togekiss thunderous got redirection there kiss can perform all sorts of different roles like offensive supportive thunderous incarnate as well it's got the option to be defiant pranks though we've seen how good that is in the current format right now and then you got mama swine bulu is his next pick snorlax darmanitan but the 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 regular darmanitan the fire type which is just ridiculously strong especially in the right situations urshifu rapid strike stack attacker mr ryan poltygeist as well it's a pretty scary team when you look at it. Got some really solid trick room options in there. And then the, the fast mods in here are really good as well because you've got the Thunderous with that really good, undeniable kind of speed control and, and um, Thunder Wave, Scary Face, things like that. And then Airstream on things like Togekiss as well along with the 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 uh the follow me there that is all the teams and that brings us to our team who is the southwest score bunnies and this was the draft that we kind of eventually ended up with so if you watch the draft league draw uh that joe did uh you'll see that he ranked this team as the best team from the draft now I'm like super happy with our draft league. I think we got pretty lucky, like I say, with how the draft kind of ended up and evaluating what was left at the time when it came to my picks, because I knew if I pick Venusaur, it's very unlikely at that point that, that Poker Alex was going to pick the Torkoal because uh, he had two picks. So I don't think you pick the Torkoal in that situation, which meant I could then pick the Torkoal up the next turn after his picks pretty seamless and get that that kind of those two tier one picks which kind of give me a really good base for going forward obviously wanted a trick room mod in the team as well because i think trick room is pretty solid and um, so i i kind of missed out my tier two picks and went for straight in for my tier three pick with mimikyu just to make sure i had that pokemon there gives me a lot of room a lot of options to be able to kind of shut things down early on that you've got the disguise there which is just amazing and it gives me that trick room mod that i was looking for then going after the rhyperia tora cat as well 
obviously Joe picked up Incineroar early on, so I couldn't go for that, but it's kind of like a, um, the next best thing, I guess, you know? We don't have the dark typing, but it's a bit faster, it's a good fake out user, and it still carries Intimidate if I want to utilize it. Um, Persimian, I mean, it was there because I had the Azumarill, because I think there's there's combinations there, and also having a Defiant Pokemon um, isn't a bad thing. And what you got to think as well in a draft league, it's not really like your standard format where you kind of having to worry about oh, there's so many Fairy types being used, there's so many Flying types being used. Not every team's going to have these options like you're going to see in a kind of standard meta game. So a lot of these Pokemon that are generally quite good, but kind of get hampered and and like not as viable in a format which is full of like flying or threats that are super effective against it in a draft league that kind of opens the door up massively so things like persimian in particular things like scrafty really can shine and do do some nice nice work for you uh obviously was able then to pick up charizard as my first free pick because as the draft league kind of ended i was one of the first players to be able to have a pick of the free Pokemon from tier one that were left and Charizard was left. So I was like, it just makes sense to get the Charizard with the Venusaur on the tall call. Um, team's got a lot of options. I think a lot, lot of flexibility, a lot of ways to set up if I need to. Um, obviously the, the kind of the core of the team with the Charizard Venusaur tall call, I'm like, I can't believe I actually managed to pick up all three and not get sniped on any of them. So that was amazing. And um, we've got like lots of support options and ways to, to really disrupt opponents and kind of approach games differently, I think, going forward. So it's, it's really nice. But getting on to our first match in week one, as we kick off this draft league, it is against Poker Alex, a very good friend of mine, known Alex for a long time. Obviously done a draft league as a, a multi-battle league with my partner before as well. So yeah, I know exactly what Alex is all about. And he, it's a scary proposition. I even said to him, I was like, I, I wish I had an easier opponent week one. But you know, there aren't that many easy opponents, probably none. Um, and like going into this, you can see like where the threats are for us because you've got the, the Tapu Fini, the Cortana. Mudsdale is going to be a big issue for us here and he's got like you know if you decide to go down a trick room route he does have ways to um to really disrupt our trick room mode with the viker vault you know he's got um decent options to shut down trick room as well with chandelier and he's got the drampa as well with that the, um is it cloud nine uh, i think it gets access to to stop our weather altogether which we quite you know heavily rely on so there's a few things that we need to think about when we're kind of approaching this matchup now I think for us, uh, really, when, when when I look at the team, you know, uh, I think Charizard is amazing for us. There's not really many ways that Alex has to deal with the Charizard in particular. That was my first thinking. I think if he gets into a trick room with Mudsdale, that can be a bit tricky. But um, other than that, there's only really the Cartana that will outspeed Charizard, like, naturally um, in, the, in, the, in his entire team. So I think Alex would probably prefer a trick room mode. So it's maybe something that I don't really lean on too heavily. Whereas if I've got the tall call to kind of come in and maybe for this one, rather than be like super hyper offensive, eruption, heat wave, maybe something like Yawn could be a little bit more valuable for me because I could see him setting the trick room up and then just slowing the game down for myself and stalling out those trick room turns is probably going to be a better way to approach it. Chandelier is definitely something that I worry about because Chandelier can take Attacks pretty well from Charizard, obviously with the flash fire, got to be careful where I'm aiming those fire type attacks into, um, and obviously we can use Scorching Sands, um, but Chandelier can set the trick room up as well, and can we deny it? Um, this is where Mimikyu kind of maybe comes into the question, because I think Mimikyu here, obviously outside of the Cortana again, does pretty well against most of the team. It gives us a way to get rid of Drampa pretty quickly with something like Play Rough, um, we can do decent damage to Galarian Zapdos, don't really worry about that too much either. Can do good damage to the Umbrian. Can shut down the Cresselia. So I feel like Mimikyu, very good option for us, especially as a lead to kind of just get a gauge on what Alex is trying to do. And it gives us an option to try and help shut things down. So what I'm going to do now is hop over into Showdown and I'll show you how I'm starting to put this team together. Okay, we're now over on Showdown, uh, and this is the team that I've put together now. I'm still a bit unsure on a few elements of the team, but there's a few things on Alex's team that I'm worried about. And you can see here, I think the big players that, that would worry me a little bit more than anything are definitely the Mudsdale. 
I think like with Assault Fest, it's probably a good way to approach the team that we've got. And also I think um, the Viker Vault as well. Under Trick Room, it can be very scary. And both give Charizard a hard time. Charizard's definitely something I'd like to go forward with in this match. Um, I think the residual damage and probably is my maximum. It probably gives me like a lot of scope. Unfortunately, like not going the life orb route, uh, I, I feel like I've got a couple of options where I can go like Wackenberry to give us protection against the, the electric threats that are here in the, the Rotom Frost or the, the Viker Vault. Or I can go for the Charlie Bray, which gives me a little bit more room around the Mudsdale. And I've kind of opted, honestly, for the Charlie Bray for this one particular reason. So um, I can fake tears and then I can launch a big attack into the Mudsdale. Um, turn one and not worry about having to utilize the charm because if I'm utilizing charm then I'm not maybe doing as much damage as I would like to onto the Mudsdale and the thing is I don't know if there's going to be the only line of protection that Alex has got on his team uh, for recovery is going to be the Tapu Fini with Heal Pulse whether he goes down that route or not I don't know. The other big problem for us is obviously the Drampa, which gives us loads of issues, whereas the Fake Tears kind of helps us get around that a little bit, especially when you pair it up with something like the Charizard. Um, so the, the Jolteon spread here just kind of helps us slow things down with Charm, obviously the Cartana, the Mudsdale, are the, the kind of the big threats. Got to watch out for Glarian Zapdos, of course, as well, because that could be something that he goes like coaching with. So one of the things that I wanted to do uh, between this set was kind of allow Charizard the room to kind of function against particularly the, the Mudsdale, especially if we do see like a coaching where it's plus one, but at the same time, I feel like I'm kind of torn in decisions where I maybe want to go for a fake tears uh, in that 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 situation to just maximize damage. Um, but this Charizard spread, it's not the, the most offensive, but with the Charlie Berry, it allows me to take a plus one max rockfall uh, from uh, Adamant 252 Mudsdale. So I think that's pretty good. And then allow me to get at least the residual damage off, which might set up a late kind of game win. Um, so this was pretty much here. The, the Jolteon can support uh, the team super well with fake tears and um, the talk of Venusaur of course uh, the charm helps out against those physical attackers the only one like I say need to watch out for is the Glarian uh, Zapdos but I do have Thunderbolt for that now Roar is an interesting choice here as well because I feel like one of the things that Alex may try and do is go down a trick room route at a certain point in the game he's got a lot of Pokemon that perform well in a trick room environment he's got ways to stop the trick room as well um, and especially if that Vikavol gets set up under trick room it's going to be it's going to be really difficult to deal with so one of the ways to stop Cresselia or Chandelier in particular especially with a mental herb like I could easily go down a taunt route but mental herb kind of skews that for us like massively so one of the things that I thought would be quite good in that situation scenario would be roll so I can kind of just roll them out of the field because it's not likely that Cress is going to max watch Cress match max in this match and um, but like I say it gives me a way around the mental herb without kind of having to to worry about it so they're the options there for Jolteon really straightforward spread obviously 252 252 you just want to maximize the uh, the speed and the damage output especially because I've got the sash which gives us a little bit of security uh, for the, the the first couple of turns that it's on the field Charizard have kind of explained like I was torn between Wackenberry and Charlie Berry I feel like one of the resist berries here would be probably beneficial like I could go down a life orb route with the sun up but there's going to be issues with Drampa being on the field probably getting rid of the sun and also the fact that you'll probably calc things like crest to take the um the the, the life orb in sun uh gmax wildfire anyway so to really get a little bit more out of charizard i feel I want to keep that speed stat so at least I'm speed tying with Galarian Moltres because I don't want to get into a situation where if he brings it and he starts max air streaming with it at least I can try and keep pace with him and have the chance to get the airstream off before he gets it off to support one of his other Pokemon which could be an option he goes down you know and um, so a little bit more bulkier uh, with Charizard Scorching Sands is there to hit things like the Chandelier because otherwise we're going to be kind of stuck I mean we've got airstream but it does help out um, against that in particular i did think about um dragon pulse as well 
uh, just for the Dramper, but I don't know if it's really that necessary because we've got plenty in the team that can help kind of support that. So um, that's the Charizard in a nutshell. Um, Charizard doing Charizard things. Uh, hopefully we can get it in the sun with the Torkoal um, and the protection that we've got from Jolteon and especially Scrafty with the Intimidate there. Uh, Calm, Charm as well really is going to help it kind of just stick around as long as we need on the field because it's going to be a, a, a situation possibly if the Trick Room does go up, we need to stall out. And I think that the tools that we've got here do allow us to a certain extent to kind of stall out some of the, the Trick Room shenanigans that could be going on. Uh, Tolkol going to be up next. So Tolkol, I've been really toying between going like hyper defensive with body press or going with a salt vest was something that i looked at i thought that could really work well um but in all honesty i think for when you think about the situation when Torko will come onto the field and really be the valuable team member for us is if that trick room does go up and the biggest threat at that point is going to be the the viker vault so i think what i've done is kid at the 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 spread so we're, we're able to always take um, a max lightning from a modest 242 Viker Vault. Um, and then the Shucker as well gives us a little bit of room against Mudsdale in a Trick Room environment where we at least are able to take a max um, max Quake or max Rockfall. We take the max Rockfall anyway, but the max Quake, obviously with the stab there, is a bit more powerful. And that then allows us to get the Yawn off, hopefully stall out the Trick Room, open up a bit of room for us. And with Heat Wave and Earth Power, kind of gives us the spread that we need where we're not going to be like locked out against something like Chandelier. At least with Earth Power, we got a way to hit it. It's a little bit bulkier there. Venusaur, I do think, is quite important to this match. I don't know how pivotal it'll be, and I don't know if I'll really see myself maxing it, but it is something that I think is needed in particular for uh, the, the Tapu Fini. In all honesty, that's the big thing. And obviously, just Venusaur in Sun in general is going to be very powerful uh, it gives me kind of a backup um maximum if i want to go down that route but particularly for the finny like we do have jolteon here for the finny but i think venusaur um can do well against the mudsdale as well for sure needs to be careful against the the zapdos but that's why we went with the cobra berry on it um, and the residual damage is going to be so invaluable chandelier is another one that's a little bit iffy um of course without the sun chandelier causes us also all, all, all sorts of issues, especially if it's max speed, but that's kind of why um, I've got the Charizard there and the, the Jolteon to kind of help out with that matchup. Also to note as well, there is the option where I could have went maybe Shadow Ball <coughs> over Charm, just to give us a little bit of extra stab, but I think I'm not really sure I need that because the next Pokemon and the, the one after that kind of really help out with it. So this is the Mimikyu. Again, toyed around with, with different spreads and things that I was going to go on with the Mimikyu for this one. Um, the speed stat allows me to outspeed max speed Rotom Frost um, and anything below that, so Chandelier and things like that. Not that I need it, but um, I don't think I need any more speed on Mimikyu than that. I think that's pretty good. It guarantees me the taunt so I can shut things down like, like Cresselia, like we talked about, you know. If they haven't got the Mental Herb, then taunt really helps us open the door for stuff like that, especially against Tapu Fini. It's one of those Pokemon that tends to want to set up, you know, in games, so it gives us that option to shut it down. I did think about Woodhammer here. Because I think Woodhammer gives us a nice physical option against Tapu Fini, which may get Calm Minds up, and, and the Mudsdale as well. And it's just that secondary grass typing that we we can have access to without having to rely too much on the Venusaur. Um, but I kind of, in the end, opted for the Sword Stand set because I think the thing is with the team, I feel like there's going to be opportunities where there's room for Mimikyu to kind of set up and punish turns where Alex might try and set up. Say there's a, there's a situation where he's trying to get the Trick Room up. Uh, I can roar out if I've got the board position anywhere in Sword Stance in that scenario. And even if not, if he say he's got Chandelier out on the field and I know he's going to try and get a Trick Room up in that scenario, I can Sword Stance that turn and then take advantage of the, the priority Shadow Sneak. The thing is with the Life Orb as well, Shadow Sneak guarantees a knockout on Chandelier, like a two-hit KO on Chandelier, and the player ref is a guaranteed one hit on Galarian Zapdos. So for those reasons, it was kind of it made a lot of sense. Also, the player ref gets the Dramper as well, which can be a little bit problematic and obviously restricts our sun. So I think the Mimikyu, I could have went protect on it. I could have went a different route with it for sure, but I feel like on balance. 
this feels like probably the best Mimikyu option that I've got. I don't need to worry so much about the Cortana because we've got such threats in, you know, the Charizard, the Torkoal, and the Jolteon to a certain extent that can help it shut down. Um, and the last slot, I could have went for Torracat here, but I've opted to go for Scrafty. Um, and it's a bit strange because obviously it does have access to Fake Out, and I've thought long and hard about this. But I think the fact is that, that Scrafty can pressure Fake Out um and, and force like double protects in certain situations which is maybe enough in those scenarios to allow me to get like a bulk up off um and a minus one cartana against the plus one plus one scrafty we should win out in that scenario in most cases the ice punch is there for coverage against mudsdale because i think i don't want to be in a situation against mudsdale in an end game with scrafty where um I'm contending against being able to hit it for good damage. If we can get ourselves to like plus one or plus two, at least then the ice punch, even if we are proccing the stamina boost, we're going to be able to kind of maybe out damage it, especially if we combine that with like drain punch recovery. So um, I think that this Scrafty is interesting. Got to be careful how I use it, of course, because the thing is we don't want to be proccing the Defiant ability on the Zapdos. But I do feel like we've got enough in the team between like the Jolteon, Charizard, um, and the Mimikyu to a certain extent to kind of deal with those threats. So that is the team um, for today's uh, episode. Really, the analysis going up against Alex in week one, which is the too hot to handle Harry Emma. So it'd be great to hear your thoughts on the draft league in in general your thoughts on the matchup how you think it's going to go and keep an eye out for the matchup soon i will post out on our comment section of the channel when the match is scheduled to go out when i've decided that with alex so keep an eye on that one thank you so much for tuning in though friends we'll come back to this one we'll come back to our big cam but it's been it's been a really interesting video i am um, i would like to have some sort of feedback with how the structure of this has been set up obviously in in future videos um, I won't be uh, doing all the bump beforehand. We'll be diving straight in with the team and then coming into my analysis. So it has been like shortened down a bit for today's episode. So it's not as in-depth as I probably would have liked it to have been. But I would love to hear your feedback on the structure and things like that. Now make sure to check out the other side of the battle and any analysis from Poker Alex. All his handles are down in the description below. It's a great content creator. If you've never come across him before, you're, you're missing out. He does a lot of content in, in Spanish, obviously is from Spain but his content in general you can pick up the gist and he's one of those players he's one like I think he's one of the best players in Europe and, not, and like and that's no exaggeration I think he's an incredible player and if you're coming into VGC new he's definitely someone to keep an eye on watch how he plays learn from because you can pick up so much from him and uh, he's a good guy as well at the end of the day which counts for a lot you know so hopefully you've enjoyed today's episode friends thank you so much like I say for tuning in and uh, stick around and stay alert stay alert stay alert for, <laughs> for the match coming out soon all right have a good one take care of yourselves bye bye